Not everybody got the ability to spend money in a video game. So majority of the player who plays the game will try to approach it as a free to play. Now, many spenders as well, when they first start out, they start as a free to play and they kind of figure things out before they spend money into the game. But in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to guide these new players that are coming in and maybe you are an older player who has been playing this game and you still need a little bit of a guidance. So this video is for players that need guidance for their flagship. All right, we're going to help you out in here into your investment onto the flagship. Now, it may look simple of what to invest for some people, but there is a desperate need for this video because I still see players that are using incorrect flagship when it comes to this game. So my name is Shinchi42. I create regular Infinite Galaxy content. Now, if you guys do enjoy IG, consider subscribing. And if you love the contents that we're making, if you find it to be actually helpful and beneficial for other players, do press the like button and click the share button as well. These things help the channel out to grow and reaches out to more people so we can educate more players within the community of Infinite Galaxy. So today we're going to talk about the flagship now i'm not going to talk about my legendary or my gold flagships in here because this is the whale method all right but understand that these flagship in here has a counterpart which is the same exact thing but a weaker version so if you see those whales that are investing into specific flagship like the Hades, which is the same thing as the Radamantis. So you can see, you know, where I'm going with this. It's relatively simple. You have to look at it. Every gold has a counterpart to a purple. So the investment that you want to do is relatively easy. First thing that I want to say, avoid the gatherers. So if you see gatherers in here, like Argo, this is a blue one. Like you see Jason. Recently, I seen a Jason, like really high rank Jason. Um, this is a pretty decent high rank. I would say he's a level, or he's a rank seven. Yep, I did it. But I can do it because I'm a spender, right? I, I have my main flagship for battles. But if I see a Jason going out in the battlefield, doing PVP or PVE, I'm just going to be like, what in the world are you doing with a freaking Jason in the battlefield? This flagship is mainly for gathering resources two of the skills in here are for resource gathering load boost you know you can use the load boost for pillaging players but majority of these will not going to really help you in a pvp or a pve scenario when we talk about pvp it means player versus player and when we talk about pve it is player versus environment so as you can see navigation speed it's not going to help you in the battle itself but allows you to move it does help in a battlefield but not in the you know actual battle itself so if you see gatherer avoid it if you see someone using jason joining your rally ask them is this your fleet is this what you're really using and tell them you're doing it all wrong then tell them you're doing it wrong and there's nothing wrong to tell them about you know the proper way of doing things in infinite galaxy you're only helping your friends so if you actually want send them this video so that they will understand that jason is not a main flagship for free to play this is a gatherer flagship and should be only be using to mine asteroids this isn't going to be one of those that you're going to use for planet as well now if you have peleus this is what you use for the planet now here's the thing what then should you invest as a free to play player all right so there's a few things that you would want to invest as a free to play player there is the radimantis which i've talked about earlier you know i use a hades i'm actually going to be working on the radimantis in here so i'll have another destroyer set up in here but the radimantis is a good flagship to invest on if you are going to be focusing onto a destroyer fleet setup same way as i do so if you're trying to copy what i'm doing here in 
Infinite Galaxy and you want to do the free-to-play version, you can do it with the Radamantis. Now, another thing that you want to invest is Orion. This is the same thing as the freaking Artemis. It looks the same. It's like carbon copy of each other. But the Orion is the purple flagship. And Orion is mainly for frigs or frigates. So this is what you want to invest on. So now if you're investing into frigates, this is going to be mainly for the tank ability. All right. So one another thing that I want to tell you guys in here, when you join an alliance, ask your alliance members or I'll ask your team, what are you guys mainly focusing on? Because this is very important that you guys will have a consensus of what the team is going to be building. All right, so if your team is mainly frigates, then you might want to consider building into some of the frigates. There's going to be a few guys that are going to be like destroyer, just like me. Our alliance is mainly cruisers, and I'm one of those rebels who is a destroyer because I love destroyers. I hate the cruisers because they're slow, but they're very beneficial as well. They destroy me in the battlefield, but since I spend money into the game, I'm much stronger than other players, even if they are using cruisers. That's one of the benefit of spending into the game. But not everybody spends it in the game, and you're going to meet a lot of players that are free to play as well. So, frigs. These are really good against the cruiser. So, if you are going against a bunch of cruisers, you know, frigs is a good one to go against with them. And um, if, you, you know, I'm a destroyer, so I, I, I do, you know, have some benefit when I see some frigs, especially when I see them on 101. That, that just makes it, makes my day like really happy whenever I see frigs 101. Um, Prometheus, this is a free flagship. Um, I think you should get it as a free to play player. Um, you get it from the campaign and I'm trying to, you know, increase this slowly. Um, Prometheus is a good one. Um, you can definitely use it on PVP and slash PVE as well, but I will tell you this right now. This is not the best PVP, but if you are a free to play player, you got to do what you have, or you got to make use of what you have. So having access to a gold flagship, which is Prometheus, is better, right? It's better approach than not having at all. So one more thing that I want to mention in here, if you have a legendary flagship or a gold flagship that is not rank six, don't use them, right? A uh, maxed purple is better than a half-ass gold, all right? That's one thing I want to tell you guys. If you have a max purple, Use that instead of a rank below six of a gold, all right? So, you know what? I, I might even be a little bit more, you know, kind of brutal in here. Honestly, below rank nine, right? Below rank nine. <laughs> but rank rank nine is, rank, rank six is, is, is not bad. Not, rank six is not bad. But rank nine, because you get this um, effect in here for the uh, auxiliary skill. So, that makes it, you know, more enticing when you have a rank nine. Um, gold flagship. So another, um, you know, flagship that you want to work into is Theasis. Uh, this is the same thing as I do. I am doing a, a Hades and Poseidon, which is the Theasis version on the purple one. Um, this is a really good flagship as well. Um, this is more of a tank flagship with a little bit of a damage there, but it's mainly for tankability of your fleet. But again, slight, you know, input of the damage in there. Um, if you are looking for a heavy damage flagship for purple, you might want to look at the Atlas, which is similar to Titan. And this is going to be a mainly PvP flagship. So player versus player flagship. The Atlas is a very good investment for the free-to-play player, especially if you are facing in a lot of combat with against other players in your nebula. Um, the Apollo is a good one as well, but I wouldn't say it's better than the, th the thesis or the better than the Atlas. The Apollo may be coming into third in year or fourth, um, but the Apollo is not bad as well. But I would say priority wise, you might want to look into the Atlas, thesis, Orion, um, Radamantis, and also uh, Brontes. So Brontes is going to be, uh, where is Brontes? Brontes is going to be for the, uh, the, the cruisers. So if you're, you know, if you, if you see people that are working on Cyclops, then you might want to look into the, uh, Brontes in here. So, which I have no idea why I have this 
crew here. Um, you can ignore that. I don't. I made some flip ruin here. Um, I haven't really set this up fully, so you can just ignore the ugly crew I have. Look at that level one. I should actually flip it. So you need to make sure that you put that your you know your uh, highest crew uh, captain, higher captain in here into the higher level. So I need to make sure that I move that into the higher level in here. I don't know why I did that. Um, captains we're gonna talk about that in the future in here because as you can see my captain is relatively ugly on my second and third fleet you know it's 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 not the best you can see i have a greg lee in here because he's level 15 i'm using greg lee here for the leadership boost and a little bit of a you know flagship boost but i'm not really using greg lee's skill i mean it does help me because i do farm with this setup as well when it's idle um but as you can see my main ship now is pretty good captain and I, you know, we're going to discuss more into the captain and what I am doing, you know, with my captains in here. So for the most part, I think I've explained things to you guys. Avoid, avoid flagships that are gatherer. Avoid flagships that are mainly like hunt as well, except for Prometheus. Prometheus is an exception because he has auxiliary, you know, auxiliary skill. But the Hercules, avoid Hercules. I, I, even if I said Prometheus, avoid Hercules because Hercules does not have that auxiliary skill, which makes it good for Prometheus to be in combat. Um, but Hercules, avoid it. Um, mainly invest into Atlas. Um, I, Apollo is okay. But Thesis is a good one. And then Orion, Radamanthus, Brontes. These things that I just mentioned are the ones that you should work on for PvP and PvE scenarios. So here's another general tip that I want to give you guys. And we're not going to go in depth in too much detail into it today. But I want you guys to understand when we talk about certain type of flagship like the destroyer, the frigates, and the cruisers, you don't want to mix them. So you don't want to mix a Radamantis and Orion. You don't want to mix a Orion and you know a Brontes. Well, technically you can. You know, you just have to switch your fleets. But if you really want to get the max, well, not switch your fleet. You got to mix the fleet. But if you really want to get the maximum benefit, try to do one full fleet, just like what I'm doing in here. I'm doing a Hades and Poseidon. That's pretty much 100% destroyers. So if you are going to be doing, um, you know, an, uh, an Orion, you don't want to pair it with a Radamanthus, right? That the buff is not going to align. You need to look into the skills. Very important. What you want to do is that you are going to use these three main ships that are Orion, Brontes, and um, Radamanthus, and you want to pair it with a different you know flagship like thesis apollo and atlas so any of those flagship that you combine it with uh, you know a thesis you know apollo and atlas would really work well so you know there is three main ships there's three alternates that you can do that you can just flip around and switch things around in there and you can make your own combo but if you're looking for a dps like i've mentioned the atlas is really good the Atlas, I would say, out of the three is probably the best because, you know, what you want to do is deal damage, right? Deal freaking damage. But the Atlas is not good when it comes to PvE scenario because this is a PvP flagship. Now, if you are a free-to-play player, of course, you're going to accumulate and you're going to earn eventually some you know, Advanced Federation credit and start working on the gold flagship. Depending on what you really want to go for, whether you're going to go for um, destroyer, frigates, or cruisers, it's really up to you, and I can't tell you what to do. I'm doing destroyers because I like destroyers. I like just the name of it. It sounds scary. But anyway, my intergalactic friends, I hope this video is helpful. I hope that you guys will share this video to educate more players within the community. Share it to your team, maybe to your enemies. You know, maybe your enemies today can be your friends tomorrow. Anyway, my intergalactic friends, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next time.